Let's talk about scheduling. Oh, We've been yes. talking about this yeah. quite a bit here in Minneapolis, a fight over what is fair, what is the, the right of the worker. Now, nationwide, a company is changing their policy. J. Crew has agreed to end on-call on scheduling, and instead they're providing a schedule a week in advance. So back in April, the Attorney General wrote to 13 retailers questioning the practice of keeping workers on call for shifts on short notice. J. Crew said those shifts help deal with unexpected staff absences. By eliminating them, it follows other companies like Bath & Body Works, Victoria's Secret also did this, Abercrombie & Fitch, and Urban Outfitters. So the way that it used to work was you would have to call, text, or email the day of or day before to see if you had to go into work. So you can imagine, Jen, that that would be really hard to live your life not knowing, okay, do I have to have daycare for the next day set up, or do I have, can I have to cancel my plans? I think it'd be really difficult to plan your life and appointments and everything else you have going on. I worked in retail in college for a little while, and I did have that on-call system. But the one thing about it was I could say I couldn't come in. I had the choice at that time, and I'm not sure if that's how everyone is, but I could say. I feel like these guys didn't have the choice. It doesn't sound they, like it. That was it. You and it was a very in. short time that we'd had that, and then it went back to scheduling. No. I worked in retail as well. I worked at the Limited at the Mall of America. I did not have to worry about being on call just because I barely even worked there about, it was just one day a week. <laughs> I did it for the discount, okay? But I was on call when I worked at Redstone uh, when I was in high school. And I think it was weird because I was I was only 17 at the time, and, and that, I think that's a lot to ask of someone, especially a high school student who maybe has school, uh, sports obligations, and then, okay, then you're on call. And that person might not always be the most reliable person either. So mm, what do you do as a business then when you have these people who don't show up for work? You have to fill it in. You have to fill that spot. I think you have to build it into the cost of doing business, that these things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's what's interesting in this case is that the government put on a little pressure, right? The Attorney General of New York is who sent out these letters and was like, ah, I'm not sure about this policy. And then the companies made the change, which is different from what we're seeing in Minneapolis where people are asking the city mm -hmm. to, to make, make the, the change, change mm -hmm. so the businesses don't have to do the heavy lifting. Mm. I, I just think that's an interesting difference here where we're seeing some national retailers say, like, all right, we get it. Minimum wage was the last fight about workers, mm -hmm. about justice for workers. And now it seems to be scheduling. We've and now we'll look at that. Yeah, and we've yeah. talked about how if you're a happy employee, you're generally ex like not excited to go in for on-call, but more willing You'll to help, help out. Your Absolutely. Right. You're always yeah. willing to jump in if you're happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're a team player and you like the mm -hmm. people you're working with, you're more and you want to And you want to get paid. Yeah. You yeah. want the money. You're going to get paid when you Double come Double pay. That's right. <laughs> That's what I want. Well, we called you in to come in early uh, yesterday yesterday, morning. Yesterday, I, yep, I got the call. and Way to be a team player, Kylie. I, I love where I work, so it, you know, it's okay. I'm a happy employee. <laughs> but 